Welcome to another episode of Feed the Trolls, and we have Anders with us today, which is super sick. I've been lucky enough to work with him quite a bit now. I've bugged him a lot. I actually think I did like a weird ESL impact in like Spain with you, which was oh, the right. first time I got yeah. to work with you, Anders, and I just followed you around like a weirdo not saying anything till the last day where i was like it's so cool to meet you it was very lame i know um, <laughs> then hated yourself immediately i have no doubt <laughs> oh, that was a bit awkward i relived that conversation for a while but it's very cool to have you with us uh we're doing something a little bit different today so instead of talking about a specific team because this is normally about talking about the the shit people speak on the internet uh thorin actually came up with a good idea and, and i stole it because i was lazy where i thought it would be cool just to talk about commentating as a career and also just all the crap you have to read online because that's something that i've always thought is pretty interesting and and, and as i'm sure you've been through it but after all these years how do you cope where every single time there's so much as a talent announcement and your face is on it there is a reddit thread somewhere with a bunch of people giving their opinions on what you do for a living uh oh man that's a, a giant question obviously um uh yeah and thanks guys for inviting me i appreciate it um i I ju- honestly sometimes i don't like it's funny funny timing i think the other day um i think was it is it pronounced ver or beer i'm never really sure the guy oh, the guy just the swedish yeah. movie maker or whatever you call it. yeah obviously incredible incredible um like post event videos that he does um and i was i was watching that and i was like oh, okay like you know let's see what he put together always great videos and somewhere in the comments um like a like a super narcissist i was like scrolling through um and somebody was like, life, of course <laughs> yeah exactly i didn't go that far but i mean i might as well have i guess um yeah um and somebody was like this is you know i i just can't stand listening to anders any longer uh, it's i'm sick of it you know and for whatever reason or just on that particular day i don't know what it's it probably like you. yeah like yeah in, in, right in that moment i was sure. like oh like, mm, so so like yeah it, it does and you know on a different day it wouldn't have been a big deal right. but on this day it was like for whatever reason like i'm not even sure right okay. and i thought Okay, how do I like the because the thing you want to do is try and like yell at people. Like I'm this is just my my instinct is like, wow, like I've dedicated like almost twelve yeah. years of my life to this. Um I, I have people, all pre packaged run just like that. It's like yeah. <laughs> twenty three years for you to cut you know, exact course. Yeah. yeah. By the way, also what you're not mentioning, Anders, is this, which is you actually in what's mad is remember, Anders came from the position where once upon a time he got like it's felt like unconditional love from everyone. Oh, yeah. Everyone used to yeah. just praise him, say, shower him to the heavens. But the problem is, and this is something people might not know because this is some deep Anders B. Loom law, <laughs> Anders B. Loom weaving narratives together into a tapestry of Counter Strike throughout history. Use that if you want, put it on a t shirt. I need royalty. <laughs> so basically, back in the day, Anders was actually so much of like a fucking enlightened thinker who really believed in humanity and thought it was possible for us all to make it there. Whereas I'm sort of a pessimist. Like I, I, I work on a <laughs> sure. lifeboat principle. Whoever's cool is on the lifeboat. The rest can all just die basically <laughs> uh, metaphorically in Minecraft, of course, t- TOS and all that. But basically he used to actually go, it, this is real technically. He used to go into Reddit comments and the person who just be saying the most hateful and charitable thing, like, and this doesn't even know anything about a bloody game. You can tell he didn't even know who sees from now for years. Instead yeah. of just going, down vote like I would, or <laughs> save that comment and make like a Thorin versus video. Where you're, you're cretin, what do you think you're doing? Like one of those pre planned rants. He would actually go in and try and be like, fucking like Nelson Mandela or something. Be like, listen, <laughs> man, I people. know that you might be frustrated with my commentary, and everyone has their own opinions, which are all valid and entirely understandable. But I'd just like to know do you have a moment in the game that you think you thought I did say something wrong about Seas? Yeah. Because I'd really like to get positive, constructive feedback, and I'd like to improve. And if I yeah. could be a better caster, <laughs> you can enjoy my. And it's like, holy, the worst thing is, tech, this is what actually tech tilts me the most. He doesn't know this, but even though they probably still thought the same ignorant shit, just because he's Anders, they'd go like, oh my God, Anders, I can't believe you've replied to me. Sorry, I didn't mean it like that. Like, oh, I just meant like, you know, sometimes he says something that I don't, don't know about. And then the worst thing is, right, that actually worked for a while, but I did tell him <laughs> that won't work forever. And then I noticed that eventually they broke you, didn't they, Anders? Because eventually you just stopped replying like that. I think they just got too horrible, didn't they? It's, I, I actually, to be honest, I still do it sometimes. Oh, like, God, I still, I'll, no. I'll still find people. Well, this, this is so, so this is just like a human interest thing to me. Like, I agree okay. on the whole, you're not, you're not going to change anybody's mind, right? And even if you are, like, you're interacting with a tiny proportion of the people that don't like you anyway. Like, it's not like you're, it's not like there's a hundred people and you get all of them. And if you just convert those hundred people, then everyone on the internet will love you. Like, that just obviously doesn't work that way. But I'm, like, what you're reflecting to me is it, that's, when I think about it, what I think is, when people type like hateful stuff on the internet to you, they're just not really thinking of you as a human being. Sure. And I think 
I think when you show up in like the comment section and you say, like, "Hey, um, you know, obviously if you're shouting at them, then it's easy, like sure. the game is on." But in a way, if you if you social say, "Hey, listen, I'm here," like, "What's up?" Um, most people, I think, will will have that moment of like, "Oh, they remember." Oh, yeah, there is actually a human being that I'm interacting with, and for the, for the most part, people I think are are a lot more like, "Oh, okay, hold on, like let me let me try and be a little bit constructive okay. here." So like that's just my and I think it's interesting. Um, yeah, I, I think most people are like that. I've had, so, like, obviously there are some people who just want to fight you and just kind of want to, like, they really want to see you fail. But I actually sure. had another thought, maybe, I don't know how you feel Come about on. this. But I had another thought about this, which is, this is actually part of the value, well, you have to believe this, Duncan, but this is actually part of the value that people bring by being celebrities anywhere. Um, like, if you're a football player, part of the value that you bring is that people at home, like, they get to watch football, but they also get to shout at the TV and say, why oh, did sure, you do that? Yeah. Like, so yeah. like it's a real and i think you think of it yeah, this way true. too it's like most people maybe not a lot of people have terrible jobs and kind Gosh. of boring lives and like the, the ability yeah. to, to to you know sort of yell at somebody who's just like an avatar for yes. the bad things that i mean it's, it, you actually are providing like a value in that sense it's so, why back so, in the day even though people hate to say because they say it's toxic it's why back in the day it was sort of accepted that you flame people in the game because you probably had a bad day at school or yeah, work exactly, and you right? up your ass yeah. and you come on the game and some bloody guy flashbangs you when you say I'm going in the site so of course you just give him more barrels don't you because it's just a video yeah. game it's not real life isn't it like, it's kind of like you're giving him doing a service at that point aren't you I think so, and and you know people like you know, people do that, right? They they find the most outrageous thing they can say in a game if they're allowed to at all, because yes. it makes people it makes you laugh and it makes you forget about you know your bad day or whatever a stressful sure. day at work or whatever. So sometimes when that's my other way of coping, I guess is that sometimes when I just think, okay, well you know what, like at least I got to be like kind of a lightning rod for this person who's obviously. Okay. In a way, having a bad week. Let's just this leave. fucking saying it. I know it's going. You know what? You take it, out, take it out on me, man. Like if you need that. By the way, do you want to know something mad though, Tech Girl? He's told this story before, but it'll be so long ago again in the deep Anders B. Loom law. But here's what's funny: the first time Anders ever met me, he was actually deathly afraid I was oh, yeah. going to flame him. Do you want to hear oh. that story? I definitely want to hear that. Tell, story. tell Anders, come on. Okay, so. So I had like I think I'd done like maybe like half an event somewhere. So it's like on my like second or third or some event, like not that many. Um, you know, kind of new to the game. And I remember I was like back then Duncan had a podcast with Lurpus. It was even called Podcast. Khan. It was named after the Podbots, wasn't it? Yeah, so, yeah. Sadly, yeah. that name hasn't aged well. You can't Google it. So <laughs> it was whatever. fundamentally a podcast about bullying Khan from Fnatic. It was, which was an was. amazing concept. It's just me and Lurpus is bullying Khan, yeah. one of the most legendary players of all time. By the way, by the way, this is how mean it was. We were doing it in the way that you do with British culture in pub, though. You know, as in like yeah. we were friendly with him, but we were like raw super Swedish Khan. So, for example, we'd just tell him stuff like, if you don't know, he used to say it, but he actually had won the most IEM medals ever. So we'd all just tell him shit like, "Yeah, but you had Forest to get right, mate." If Rob and had had them, he'd have all the medals. Like, just really, like, evil <laughs> shit like that. Just to, just to see if we could tilt him, you know. So, yeah, keep going anyway. And he's, like, super Swedish. So he's no, just he gonna... just take it as well. I know. Like, oh, okay. <laughs> so, anyway, yeah. That was going on, and I, I'd been invited to do an event in... Was it in Belgrade? I can't Prague. remember. Serbia? Prague. Prague. Yeah, you're right. Prague. So, so I've been invited to do that, and I, I knew Duncan was, you know, going to show up. He was going to come do, like, you know, collar casting, which I think you've done before with even Joe Miller and stuff like that yeah, in the past, right? So you had actually, like, a lot more experience in, in a way than, than I had in, in this kind of thing. And you went on a rant with Lurpus, who was also very critical of this kind of thing. Yes. Like, I'm basically, basically, paraphrasing something like, I'm sick of play by play casters, like talking out of turn, like over talking themselves. Like they think yeah. they know so much and they're like, you know, just like next time I'm going to put on work on somebody, I'm going to shut them up. Like I'm going to make these people just like, I think you know, this put is like in days before the event. Yeah, I did like, I wasn't even referring to him, before. by the way. I just spent like as a general rant, you know, like on a podcast. And then like, I think this is like two days before he's due to come to this event. I'm at yeah. I know. And I was like, oh God, like this is, this is super awkward. So I'm going to be, I'm going to be the, I'm going to be the test course, person yeah. for this, you know? And then it was, <laughs> To me, what made it, so I've got that traveling to the event. It's like a bit of still course. new, awkward, and the whole thing. And then when we show up on the day, we have like the the media day or whatever. And your plane is like super late. You're traveling yeah. out of some weird place in England somewhere, and it just took you all day, like super delayed. So you're already going to be upset. And then I remember we we're ordering pizza at the venue, and I said, "Listen, just as a tactical thing, like let's just let's wait until Duncan gets here, so that he doesn't like I don't know the guy. I've never met him before ever. Before, let's just not like." Let's not have him walk in while we're still eating pizza. Like, we're just sure. eating pizza. Like, oh, yes. we already ordered the food. I'm oh, sorry, bro. You know, which actually That's was quite cool. prescient. If you do know food is my trigger, that actually would have made me go mental. I just walked in and told him, but yeah. you couldn't have known that. That was a good guess, though. It was a good guess. It was brilliant. So, yeah, I remember like that, that, that tension at the beginning of like, just like, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to sit next to this guy and it's, I'm going to get wrecked. I, then, I didn't even know this, by the way. So, the whole time he's thinking, like, oh, if I say anything, but I'm, I'm, I, like, oh, the joke, of course, is by the way, I don't think we ever had any problems ever whatsoever. It was always just super no. chill when we worked together. But, 
That is hilarious. He was just thinking I was going to just roast him the second he said anything out in school or whatever. Because I actually, when he says the rant, I remember it was like that. It was like, he's bloody play by play. He doesn't even know anything about the game. If I ever heard them say some bollocks like wrong about the players, I'd just be like, shut up. What are you talking about? And I put yeah. them in their place. Like, it was some bad rant, but it was, wasn't even a real rant. It was all those ones you just do in the moment, you know, to be like edgy. Like, yeah, well, and I'd also, I reckon, you know. Because Lopez is on the other side, right? Yep, Lopez is one of these helped. people who will he will join that. Like he's he would do that, that as well. Know? The joke is Lopez actually would do that. It's just, sure, that's just, that's just his weird Android way of viewing reality. Yeah, but you know, just <laughs> as a side tangent to that, like I will say this: like Lopez is one of the few people in the beginning who gave me like really good feedback. Like just like oh, oh, okay. oh yeah, it's unsolicited feedback, but it was good. Like he just said, like listen, I've listened to your broadcasting and I've heard that like a lot of the time your co-caster will say something and you will to pick up the sentence you will say yeah that's right and then you will move on and what it sounds like is that you have to validate their opinion all the time right you don't need to you could just say you just leave a pause and then say something else like it's fine that's you good don't advice have to... yeah it's really good advice and i thought you know but actually and somebody warned me this was a dream hack i think for the for the for the first major or whatever like somebody did warn me and say like you've got to be careful about working with Lopez. Like he's super, Ooh, okay. he's super mean. Like he, you've got to be sure. like, he's super hard to work with. He wasn't like, but no, no, you know, but the, the atmosphere True. was there. Like he had the reputation already, which is sure. fun. Yeah. It's why it's mental back in the day. They used to hire the both of us. It's like, oh, like yeah. it, the funny thing is if people think people, are, you know, now when they do events that girl, like if you just say something mildly, like spicy, they're like, Oh, it's so mean what they said. You guys should tune into some of those old, pro like as he says, look, <laughs> just straight up silly. I think this guy isn't even good. Like what's he doing yeah. on the team? We, we, and the guy Get just like sat like over there playing in the tournament <laughs> area, like, like Super trying to care. not hear it. You know, like it was insane. I don't know. I'll, I actually, I actually have like, this is, this is such a, it's just so fascinating to me. So so I was walking around with Lopez at this first event, right? And at DreamHack. And for those of you who really have been around for a long time, will remember Take TV, Dennis, oh, I think, sure. is their name. Oh, I love this story. Come on. Yeah. It's, so this, is, this is brilliant. Come he on. He comes up to us, and he is, has a sponsorship from some chair gaming chair company, right? <laughs> yeah. They walk up. Just one of those friendly. racing ones, you know, that the yeah, classic yeah, ones yeah, everyone yeah, has, yeah. like Anders has now. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly, right? Like, yeah. they walk up, and they're super friendly, super nice. They yeah. are friendly people. You know, they show up sure. and say, hey, listen, we're doing, like, a thing where we just we, just, we want different people to just sit in the chair and just tell it's us like how they feel. like a booth yeah. Yeah, exactly. Well, they're just walking around the venue and it's it's like it's actually a great concept right because what they get is like you know a hundred people who are like semi-celebrities or whatever dream right. players casters all the all they just get like a hyper cut of all these players who sit in the chair and obviously everyone's gonna say this is a decent chair like nobody wants to be an asshole and say I don't like, you know so it's like free advertising for them i don't blame them like it's it's really a smart gimmick but and i would have done it like every single day they right, like, oh, of course i'm like doing it right cause. but this right before I on. say, like, right before I, say, I just say, oh, yeah, yeah I'll, you know, I'll do, I'll do it. Like, Lerba steps in and he says, what's in it for us? Which, to me, <laughs> is such a, it's such a, like, social taboo. I know, it's just, such a, just you just don't like, find that guy's brain off it, I don't yeah. know. And, and, and then he's a super nice guy, he, he replies, he says, uh, uh, you get to help us and be uh, nice guys. And, and Tommy just says, <laughs> but I'm not a nice guy. And I just remember thinking, like, yeah. Jesus Christ, what's that? But then, obviously, he and, you know, and they ended up walking away. We didn't do it. But yeah. I thought in the aftermath, I thought, actually, he's totally right, though. Like, it, obviously, the way that he's putting this is super aggressive. But sure. he's right. Like, he's literally just saying, you want free sure. stuff from us. You want, like, w w you know, like... I just thought that was funny. It was one of those moments that was like a real learning moment for us. Like, actually, he, he wasn't wrong. The best yeah, thing is, by the way, there's even but... an addendum to the story, which is after this, that Take TV guy must have like internalized all that when <laughs> Lopez went away. And he even got mad triggered and was just like flaming Lopez on Twitter back when yeah, no probably. one was on Twitter. And just being like, you fucking asshole, who you think you are or whatever. <laughs> but I actually think that is straight fire because it is just like what you wish you could say to everyone. Like, what's yeah. it for me? I'm not a nice guy. Just fucking walks off. Yeah. Not interested at all. I love it. No, that was really sick. Um... But yeah, just to, like to wrap the whole thing around, like I would say, just on the coping front, right? Like I just th there are days where I I cope super well and it doesn't matter and I feel super good about it. There are definitely days where I don't, and I think my, I just try to when I notice that I'm having one of those days or weeks or whatever, things aren't going super well. I try to shift my attention to something else. Like I don't do, like I don't try to like interact with it too much. Um, and you know, like that's that's kind of it. But as Duncan said, like it is actually I think I think super important to highlight. It is is very brutal when you get to the other side of like you know being the one that because everyone is going to come through this at some point right like yep. when you're on your way up you are like you could do nothing wrong everyone loves you and it's tragic in like two different ways like one you don't realize that's happening you yep. just think 
I'm here because I've heard it. Everyone loves me. It's what I'm, I always dreamed of. It turns out yeah. I am special. Mom was exactly, right, you know. Yes. And you know, yeah. you don't know something funny. There's actually a concept. Look, <laughs> it has it aged well because if people know him, he's not really like a cool guy. Now. But that guy from League of Legends, Travis Gafford, who does all the interviews, double if yeah. else, yeah. He once described that to me and he gave me a banger cut name for it. He said it's the rubber band effect. Because think about it, right? When you when you succeed and everyone loves you, it's like they're pulling the rubber band out like this. When right, the bomb yeah. is a sheet, it's going to come back, isn't it? When yep. it comes back, the backlash is going to be every, the same guy's just going to be like, fuck you. And you're like, you yep. loved me a year ago. What? What, yep. what? Love me again, please. What can I do? <laughs> That's what you feel like in it. Yeah, and like for, for, for Semler and I specifically, right, that happened when like, you know, Matt and Henry were, were right. like coming up. And you can see it coming. Like you kind of, you feel like, okay, we're doing a lot of the same kind of work. Like we're, we're maybe not reinventing so much. And these guys are coming in. They've got like new energy. They're doing great work. And then you just, you can see it, but you can't really slow it down. And then you get the other side of it, which is now, but the community still love you at that point. So you're like, oh, so, you know, it's all good, you know? And then you get, when you see the community slowly turn and you just like, you're like, I can't do anything about it. Like what, I, I wish I could like stop this or like pull the brake or something, but there's no, there's, it's not possible. And I think that's like where a lot of people in esports, I think just like, that's where they crash out and just can't like, there's not, there's nothing on the other side of that because it is kind of brutal. There's no question about it. Um, but well, yeah, here's I mean, the like, funny thing. I'll tell you where we should tie this to. Sam, yeah. you're still at the phase where they're pulling <laughs> the rubber band out. Because I see that every comment on these, ch- the videos are getting bang of views. But all the comments saying, love you. Oh, great job. <laughs> like, oh my God, you've revolutionized podcasts. Everything's beautiful. It's all the way. Oh, I hope you get, hope you get, I mean, the classic one as well, we could probably get to. I hope you get Shox's job and all three of his jobs. All like, well, like, they're all my friends. But like, whatever. They do that as well. So at the moment, you're still getting the rubber band out. But I, I don't know if you get much hate it, but it's going to come snap back eventually. There'll be some angry. Like, Who the fuck? And, and a stand South African accent as well. So there'll be all that soon. Well, that's, I think I get a lot of love on my YouTube channel, which okay. is fun. But I was like, I've seen enough on Reddit and HLTV oh, right. that I feel like okay. I've, I've accepted. My accent gets people really upset. Like, right. I didn't realize it was. Okay. It's my accent, so I don't know what it really sounds like. But people. I don't get it. Who, who doesn't like District 13 or whatever it was? <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. What did they say? Fucking bronze. <laughs> like exactly. Yeah. There you go. Exactly. It's Brilliant. so funny though, because Anne has mentioned that whole first time working with you. I remember. I can't remember if it was Pinnacle or an, or the NARMRs for Rio, but I had notifications on my phone, but I don't see the full notifications. So it came out that Thorin had mentioned me, and I I couldn't okay. open it because I was on broadcast. I just went. That's going to be a scary moment yeah. on broad. <laughs> I, I Thorin mentioned it. What's this? Shit, have I done anything? Did I say that anything? Was exactly. Oh, and right. then. Okay. At the end of the segments, I got a Sick. message from my it. friend, and all I saw on the, it was a WhatsApp, and all it said is, "So many people are reacting to Thorin's tweet," and I was like, "What the fuck has happened?" That was, and I didn't want to open Twitter because nice. okay. I was like, "I still have to work for the rest of the day." Oh, and couldn't destroy you your mental completely? Yeah, 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 I was like, if Thorin yeah, yeah. has flamed me, I will okay. not survive. So I didn't. I did not touch my phone for the rest of the broadcast, and then I got in, in the, the the taxi to go back, and I opened it, and you'd said something nice, and I was like, "Oh, that was." Not as bad as I thought, but I remember being terrified for a good few hours. I was like, oh, fuck, I really messed up. And like reliving everything I'd said that day, because I was like, what dumb shit have I said that he's reacted with? So that's stuck in my mind. But I I wanted to go back to that whole thing you were saying about the the feeling, the love, and that I like that elastic band analogy, though. Do you think that's also a problem in this line of work? Because you, you obviously, I've always been on the outside and because I lived so far away, all I did was I would obviously watch the streams and then read Reddit, which was probably not a good place to be, but whatever. So you, would, yeah. Yeah. so you would read about how like, you know, this person is, has got an attitude and this person's now doing this and like everyone has an opinion on, on broadcast talent. But I wonder though, how hard is it not to let all of that when, when you're on the app and everyone's telling you how great you are, like how hard is it not to let that kind of get to your head? Cause it's not like we naturally as humans and as go, no, I'm, I mean, we all do think we're shit people, but at some point we start listening and going, okay, well, maybe I'm not as shit as I thought. Maybe this I is... am as great as they say, you know? It's going to sound like the worst backhanded compliment ever, oh, but, but, but I'm going to give like, definitely some credit to my, my wife, who is, I think, who's like, it's in a way kind of keeping me grounded, you know, like sort of... Oh, she's roasting you, basically. Yeah, exactly. Just you. I see what's going on. I knew, I knew what you meant yeah. by that. I knew, it's good euphemism. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Because like, I don't, obviously, I don't come home and I'm like, you know, like, oh yeah, like, you know, all these okay. people love you. Like, like in a way, why does she care about that? Like right yeah. now, we just need like the dishwasher emptied or something. Like, you know, it's like some, some baseline. So I think, I think it actually is kind of important. Like, obviously, you know, it is cool to be, to live like 
like the we're not really celebrities, but like you know, like no, the, you want to believe you're a rock star though. Like if people yeah. don't know, half the reason why Henry G does commentary is because he wants to have that feeling. Like he's never going to be an actual rock star. So that's the closest he can get to come out on a yeah. show. Match. Like, yeah, you fuckers, what's up? So and it's it's, like, you get to live the dream a little bit, don't you? Come on, and it is super sick. Like if you're if you're in like a big arena, like you know, ten thousand people, and then after which you're at the after party. Like yeah, you are. You, you're like you are sort of living that. Like for and sure, all those are. people are coming up that you don't even know. You don't. They're just yeah. faceless industry people. Like, yeah. like you know, I know fucking again, like graphics card. Make yeah, it. and they come up like, "Oh, I've always loved you. You're a legend in the industry." Like, yeah, thanks. Well, uh, excuse me, I'm in the middle of a conversation right now. Yeah, yeah, Fucking exactly. Why I'm so <laughs> real, you know, and all that. They're not, they no, don't like live it's... in our life. I, 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 it's rarefied there. Uh, I'll just check you for my business class flight. Oh, uh, sorry. Oh, are you still here? That's uh, pretty. <laughs> you know, like, yeah, it's great, isn't it? I love it. No, Do you guys get sick. business class flights? What the fuck? <laughs> we don't sadly. All the time. We don't all... sadly. No. we're not at the Australis level. We haven't got there yet. But like that, yeah, that's super. That like that feeling is like super. I think I think to some extent, like having. Having like another side of your life because like it it's it's not not just like the audience and the and the after party. It's also like you're living in a hotel room. Like you have no responsibilities. Oh, right? sure. Like someone else is cleaning your room. Like your laundry. Like like and especially as like I say, especially as a caster. Whereas like an analyst or a host has to care about the whole show in a different way. I just have to show up for the start yes. time. There's no like almost no prep work. I mean, I can do prep work, but there's not a lot of like rehearsal stuff that I can do. I don't have to worry about what the dynamic of the show is. Just somebody just says in my ear start talking and I'm that's it like my job is, is ready um so... I like the way there is actually so much more to cast it by the way like obviously sure. you actually do prep you do yeah. production meetings you talk to you but I'd say Anders made it sound like he is some really like special Rain Man-esque character <laughs> that they just wheel in and put him in front of a, a monitor then they put the headset on like and then they just, someone just goes go and he goes that's the <laughs> exactly well, and then yeah. they like airlift him out again like yeah. that fucking cow that's and just straight to the after party at like no, I mean obviously there is more to it, but I'm just saying that like I think the the casting role is like the least um like the, you, you're the least sort of involved part of the show sure. in that sense. Like the the other like as an analyst, you kind of need to understand what's the structure of like a desk segment and all the rest of it, right? Um, so so I think you have just so little responsibility, and it's just like you're just living this super weird life that can't really compare with anything else. Like it just like it, anything will be disappointing. Like you go back home, like I said. Now there's like laundry and other like dumb shit that nobody wants to do, and it just feels bad. Like it doesn't feel great, but it also, in a way, like if you stop, if you, if you think about it, like it, it helps you become like a more grounded person over time. You're like, okay, listen, I am still like just a normal human being, really. Um, I think it's super helpful. Um, we know, you know what you like, mean. Yeah, know. yeah, you know, in, in spite of all indications. I know, like, as he's like, yeah. as he's like folding the shirts, he's like, I really, I'm just a mortal man, aren't I? <laughs> exactly. No, God, no, no, God, indeed. Yeah, but now I know what the normal people have to have to deal with. <laughs> um, I'm so grounded and down to earth. Yeah, I think that helps. And then I guess um, I think it is might also be like a Danish or maybe Scandinavian kind of like mentality thing. But like, there's this whole thing about like not. Like not sort of boasting too much about like anything that you're doing, and I think that is like yeah. kind of built in a little bit. Like nobody wants to, like you don't want to be like making a really big scene where you're like I'm I'm the best of this, and yeah. then suddenly you know you're not, and like you get slammed. So people just yes. prefer to keep it a little bit more middle of the road. I think that helps too, probably. Um, but I mean, there, there, there absolutely have been times where I've definitely like lost control from like an ego, like an ego point of view, and I've just like in my own brain, I'm like I am just untouchable, and like yes. I, you know, like I could do which I. I'm gonna be honest. This it is a sick feeling to like. I remember some of the some of the cast seminar I had in like, let's call it like 2015, 16 ish type thing. It's like it's so crazy. I remember walking on stage. And I was like, really, nothing can happen today that can stop me from delivering like the ultimate. Like I'm, I'm nobody can touch me in this. Like, I, like that's a that's a really sick feeling. Sure, but um, but obviously you know like it, that can't last forever. Like you know. Yeah, but, but that's uh, also it, right, Andy? Because the other thing, if people don't know, this is why actually, by the way, there does need to be like a proper after party to which get your shit together again and start fucking paying all those bills for the drink tabs again. Because the other thing yeah, is, true. when you finish, I I now get. Do you want to know something metal? Clip this out of context and put it everywhere. I actually now understand tech girl why all those rock and roll people just do drugs like sure, heroin yeah. and cocaine after the show because the whole point is you're actually still riding that high, but then it's going to gradually come down and you obviously you're like, oh, I wish I could have that high again. But the event's over, isn't it? You've just done the finals at that point. So I actually get now why they just like go off into all those like hedonism and stuff because in a weird way, like if you finish doing a major like the finals and you think you killed it, you, you know do what? get like a mega rush. You do feel like I am the shit. No, like he said. I am a god. Like I am Ozymandias. Look upon my works in despair. Like you just think you're the best. Yeah. You know what? I have. A, this is going to be a super Come weird on, tangent, yes. but actually, might it actually might tie into everything else that we're talking Come about on. anyway? So 
I like at at some point when like after the whole you know like you know riding the wave like on the other side of the wave at one point like a, a bunch of stuff happened in my life that I think I've gone over before but we can do it again if you guys want but um I ended up like having like the ultimate like you know crash and burn sort of moment like I felt my whole life was dissolving I was wasn't doing well at all and at the end of it I ended up seeing a psychologist it was amazing like it was super helpful I recommend it to people in general um obviously it's hard, hard to get into but <laughs> Also, yeah, it's Freud. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. I like, it's a, listen, it's uh, <laughs> it, it, it took a moment, you know. Probably, probably would have needed that from the start, to be honest. Okay. But um, you know, better late than never, and all that. Sure. Um, and I remember, like, after talking through like some of the initial stuff with her, I I sort of said, "Hey, listen, something I've, I've thought about." I'm already I, picturing the Sopranos, like in season one already. Keep going. Yeah. Keep, hit me with it. Come on. <laughs> I I tried to explain that this concept, which is basically what you're saying. Um, of like, listen, I understand that like, I need to make good choices as in like what I eat, how much I sleep, all this rest of it. But I'm going to be honest, like there's a part of me that like, it's integral to what I do to show up like at the after parties, at the bars and out with people. And I realized as I was saying it, like, man, I'm asking my psychologist to, to, to sort of like, you know, blue stamp the idea of like getting drunk and kind of like, God, you know, hanging yeah. out with the boys and all the rest of it. Like I kind of, I almost realized for me, like, this is for everyone else. You understand? Yeah, so exactly. I want to like, give you back know, to the people. Yeah. But I had a similar now, thought. Give me that you, line. Because, like, because what I realized is if you take those things away, like completely, which at one point I did, I was like, I'm, okay. I'm, just, yeah, I'm true. going to the gym, true. I'm doing all these things, yep. which is great. But the problem is you strip all of that. There is something that kind of goes away that's that. that it just it's different somehow um so obviously there needs to be some balance no, but yeah i agree like there is yeah. there, some at some point you kind of need to have a, uh, like a, a decent time event. yeah yeah it does yeah it does it doesn't even um, have to just be a, by the way we're being too creative it's obviously just have to really be an after party we'll say. it can even be no. something like you just go to a diner with a bunch of the other casters and you just chill it's out fine, and have yeah. drinks and milkshakes and stuff and talk shit you have the decompression don't you, you get that vibe yeah. don't you by the it's, way, I've, uh, go on, go on. I was going to say it is the the de conversion, <laughs> but I was going to actually take this like in a whole different direction though, because so this is something that happens. I mean, what it's like once a year where there is some sort of esports. Well, let's focus on Counter Strike. It's Counter Strike specifically talent that has something comes out of the woodwork or has a breakdown on it or something yep. happens. And yep. I was I was actually like, it, it's a bit of a a sick situation when you think about it because I was like, what is it about our job? If if you see someone has one of these things happen okay. or like the story comes okay. out. There'll always be someone online that'll say something like, I don't understand why they're doing this. Like their job is perfect. They they have the best job in the sure. world. And I think we all agree that we have the best job, but there is something about this this industry that I think like messes with your head. And and even well, if you are super careful and you follow through and you go see people, there is that there's something about it. I don't know if it's the uncertainty of whether or not you're gonna work. I don't know if it is the high that you chase because it feels so good that when you get home you go, shit, if I never work again, I don't get that. Like what do you think it is that just has a way of turning people into the worst versions of themselves sometimes? Semlai actually said something kind of smart about this. I think um at one point we we're talking like I don't know, a couple, three months ago or something. I think um, I, something about basically that one of the one of the weird positions to be in in esports is that the people that you're working with who are kind of they end up becoming your friends because you spend actually a lot of time with them. Like you're around you're around them more probably than you are your regular life friends, at, as, especially at certain points in the year. Um, but they're also weirdly like your competitors, and that's like a, that's a super schizo kind of position to be in, where you're like, I re I like these people, I want I you know I'm happy when they succeed, but at the same time I have to recognize that. The more they succeed, the more it kind of might actually hurt my position. And what does that mean? And now it's super awkward. And, you know, do you want to congratulate them on doing some really sick stuff? Like they're doing an amazing broadcast. Do you say, that was so cool. I've, I, the best I've seen all year. I mean, you, you, you probably should. But at the same time, like there's a tendency for people to kind of like, you know, like take a step back. And, and it just feels like you're undermining your own position in some way. I think people, that there's a lot of weird psychology happening in that space where people oh, just sure. become and then like you said the, the lack of certainty about knowing what you're even doing next month and like week next week or whatever is already enough to to i think to destroy most people like i i truly don't think mo i think most people who quit esports casting do oh, it because sure. they don't know what yeah. they're doing next month basically ever um, yeah so, By yeah. the way, on that topic, that's one area where, like, there's two things there. You know, when Anders early was like, you know, sometimes I'll even think, like, I'm, I'm just the best. and It's, it's wrong. Sure. I know I shouldn't feel it. Like that. Listen, that's why me and Anders are different. I don't know if he just says that for the cameras and really secretly he's like, yeah, yes, yes. But I just do the yes, yes part. I just go, yeah, I am the shit. You're right. I am better. It's like, I used to, it's like, it's like I'll bet the best example ever was when I did that last major and I thought it might be my last event ever. It actually turned out to be quite pressing. I, I just knew it would be. And so I even told all the other analysts, like, oh, it's great to, that we're all going to do this 
this event. Like, come and bring your best. But by the way, I'm going to fucking destroy you all. Like, I'm coming with, like, fucking all my material. <laughs> I'm coming written shit. You're never going to match my level. I want you all to be at your absolute best when I destroy it. I, want, I actually wanted it to be, like, competition. Because in a way, I think it can be competition, just like in sports. But at the end of an MMA fight, you can still hug it out and all, like, throw it out, etc. So I have to say, you know, when every caster goes... Ah, oh, guys, thanks for the compliments and that, but stop bloody comparing me to other casters. Can't you just say I'm a good guy? Right, everyone does that. I won't even sure. lie. Like, part <laughs> of me, when I read that comment, if there's a comment, like, look, this comment would be about 10 years old now. But if there was a comment where it was like, oh, Dan Coe's all right, but he's no authority, I'd be like, well... There's no reason to say that about Yanko, but you are right. I am pretty <laughs> sick, aren't I? You know, like, I, so I, you know, I can appreciate both parts. I, I'm, I'm human, but I, like, I understand what you mean. But the problem is, though, I always do think when casters say that, to reference back what you said earlier, that's where casters also have to take a little bit of, like, fucking self-reflection. And remember, like we said, Anders is right. One of the purposes, think about sports or TV shows that we all watch. You want to also then talk at the water cooler at your office about what happened on that cliffhanger. You want to go, and if, by the way, if we... If I watch the sport, or Anders did, even though we're saying all the stuff about like nasty comments, if I'm watching the sport, I'm going to be like, fire that fucking Gareth Southgate. He's a shit manager. What's he doing? Because that's yeah. part of watching the sport. And the problem no, goes sick, like yeah. this. On the internet, where is that? That is Twitter. That is yeah. Reddit. That is by definition. And so the real problem with this is, and no one wants to hear this because it hurts their feelings, is in a weird way, if we're going to be the talent, we should actually sort of stay out of those spaces. Like if we go into them and get mad, well, where they're supposed to go, that actually is their sure. sort of like bar yeah. to have the conversation the problem always is though in this scenario it's, i always say they're yelling at the tv but then this analogy they don't realize us we can hear them it's like we're going like <laughs> what the fuck i'm trying to act this scene i'll stop fucking criticizing me but that's that's why the, there is like a sort that's why you're right there's like a psychological shit going on forever with all this because by the way i also do feel like part of the reason why so many people in esports have this like meteoric rise and then just crash out and burn and they're out of the industry like, three years later they don't do like gradual slow yeah. drop off like real sports people do which is the job and you're you're an institution is there is sort of something sick about wanting to be on camera and wanting to be the person everyone listens to. I yeah, remember a comedian once yeah. said this. He said, of course, comedians are all fucked up and have all problems with their childhood and have all the like, attention, like um, a desire for attention that can never be uh, met and love. He said, because if you did, if you if you whittle that job down and you describe it in a sentence, the job is I want to be someone in a room full of people with a microphone and only I get to talk and everyone yeah. has to listen to me. <laughs> there is something a bit sick about that, even though by the way you try to do really good, and you can say it like Anders, like, I'm all giving back to the people and sure, you know, sure. let them eat banter. Or, you know, like yeah, that sounds great, but at the same time there is something like that well, is sort of yeah. like. Just love me and only praise me, only praise me. Like there is something a bit sick under the surface, you know. It's true. It's, I, I, I mean, did, yeah, I think so. Yeah, definitely. 100%. I was just say, if you're self-aware enough, I think any of anyone in this job, if they can't sort of go, okay, like there is a part of, there is a narcissistic part of me that clearly thinks yes. that I, I can tell this story better than anyone, and that's why I should be here. Like I think yeah. you have to, you have to accept that, but also try and not let it take over. Yes. Uh, but with regards to like the reading of the comments stuff, this is because I remember when I first started. Um, and I didn't think this was a job because I was in South Africa. So I was just doing it to get free tickets to a LAN. And okay. I got to I got to meet Red Eye just by chance because these people had spent a massive amount of money. They flew him out. And I remember him saying his like best advice is never this read. This is Red Eye, yeah? Yeah. Paul said to me his best advice <laughs> is never read the comments. But then I watched him sit on never his phone. Never read the bloody comments, Sam. I'll tell you what. Yeah. <laughs> get out <laughs> those bloody comments. And like – but then I watched him read all the comments. So I was like <laughs> – I'm calling I him love it. I love it. I love amazing. it. And then this is something though that's happened because like I, I sometimes will read, and I know that you shouldn't, but I will sometimes <laughs> see something on like HLTV or Reddit about me, and I will want to reply because sometimes I'm like, you are. There was. I remember there was this one guy who when when they announced me for the major, obviously everyone was like, where's Stunner? This is but, the one that got to her the most, by the way. It's still in her mind. It's now still in my mind. Come on, come on. It was, this it. guy started writing this comments about how he had watched me commentate North American PUBG and how shit I was. Okay. And I had never commentated North American PUBG. But in his but mind, you had. And that's the problem. Yeah. So he just kept writing it again okay. and again on everything. And everyone said to me, just ignore him. And I was like, no, okay. I can't deal. And I replied. And I was like, my God, I've never commentated North American PUBG. And then he proceeded to start fighting with me about how I had definitely commentated oh, North. 
And after like a long exchange, it turned out he had mistaken me with another girl with brown hair. And when oh, I tell you we look okay. nothing alike, and he went, okay. oh, shit, I'm really sorry. I'm sure you'll do a great job at the major. But oh, that's not even satisfied that they give up at the end as well. Is it? That's even more whack at all. But it was super frustrating. But at the time when everyone was like, don't reply, I was like, no, but this, this, whoever this is is fundamentally wrong. Like, I'm going to correct okay. him in a nice way. But like, yeah. th- and whether it's positive or negative, because like, obviously negative, sometimes people are just assholes and there's nothing you can do. But even sometimes the positive stuff, like I'll see someone else I work with comment, like reply to a positive comment saying, gee, thanks. I really appreciate that. And then you'll hear the third person be like, oh, they're so up there and ask. They have to reply to all the positive stuff. But I actually like, I wonder where you sit with this. Because I've, I've always been on the fence. Like everyone says, don't read the comments, but everyone reads the comments. Should you be replying? I mean, Anders obviously played the nice guy. I turned them to okay. my side thing. But I've, I mean, Thorne, I don't know if this counts for you. Because I see you reply to like some really random shit sometimes. Where I'm <laughs> sure. like, that guy has three <laughs> followers. Who cares? Yeah. But, but like, do you think you should be engaging with that? Well, that's why I think I've actually cracked. I've I've caught the Gordian <laughs> knot because what I've done is I've transcended right. the mere world of you mortals needing to feel right and respond. You know, I'm a pop. I, <laughs> I live in Elysium. I live in the in Olympus, the heavens. They can't even touch me. But at the same time, then because I've monetized it, then I just pull up all the really mean comments, like you're saying, and people I've never. There's comments right that I'm roasting them. That even as I'm roasting them as a meta commentary, it's stupid as fuck. I'm even doing it because I'm roasting them that they never even got a like on this tweet from seven years ago that had no views <laughs> but I'm putting on a video now like seven years later and do that but then I, I try to pretend like you know I'm above it like but it's performative you have to understand that's entertainment what I'm doing and again I'm giving back to the people you know like I'm, I'm feeding my audience as it were but it's secretly secret really, I'll admit it here one time it's just because secretly I want to reply to and at the time I didn't reply and I want to fucking tell that idiot you're fucking wrong you idiot and then oh, but, but monetize it make sure you monetize it it's all good I tell you what, like, so, so two things, right? Like, I think it's, it's a, I think it's a human universe. Like, positive comments just mean a lot less than negative comments. They like, do. You're, really, you're gonna have a hundred positive comments, and you're just all. like, well. And so, no, I, dude, actually, you'll scroll past yes. mega yeah. unfortunate yeah. ones, going like, yeah, yeah, I'm great, I'm brilliant, I'm better <laughs> exactly, than the uncle. Yes. And then yeah. you'll go down, and this is it's this terrible. is where I even know. By the way, Richard told me about this. This is one area that Richard used to be notorious. He'd be like, not only like reading the the comment and getting really mad in the agreement with his laptop open, right? Sure. But he'd yeah. be like typing something in, and when I'd look over, it's like he'd like actually manually like un, you know, when yeah, the yeah, other yeah, shit yeah, comments that I don't vote get closed out. He'd actually <laughs> manually open them to read the horrible sure, comment, yeah. and it'd be like, bro. This is like, I mean, the problem is because yeah. we're all doing it. No one could go, you know, you've got to quit that habit. It's like, we're all doing it. So I, I get, yeah, I get it. It's awful. Yeah. So like, I, I try to, I try to make myself remember when people like, you know, DM me something like positive. I try to remember to like, take a moment to really like, you know, think about it. Like, you're not just to say like, cool and move on. Cause that is like, for whatever reason, just like how people are. So I try to like take a moment to be like, okay, listen, this person kind of, it meant a lot enough to them that they wanted to write to me. Let me just take a moment and, and appreciate that. Like, obviously that's really cool. Um, on the on the one negative, I have one. This is gonna be this is an outrageous Come comment. On. This was really early on, so this is like this is like pre like weight loss anders, you know. Oh, um, by the way, I also do in a, in a, in another sick way. It'd be one thing if they even just said you don't know the game or you're wrong. In sure. a way, the ones that get to you the most have to be the ones that are like purely evil, like mash, yes. like you know some shit about like you can tell this... he's got like some kids locked in his basement or something. You're like, what, what? <laughs> because then the outrage you feel just is. It, I don't yeah. know what you mean like, come on, hit me with it. What, what mental illness did this spawn? So this is some, on, some unknown hero on, on HLTV um, who, you know, one of those threads that's like, you know, you know, who's the best caster or whatever, like, you know. Kind Obviously, of Anders instantly clicks that. Clicks Control that. F again, you know. Yeah, yeah. And this is, this isn't like, this is, this isn't like 2014 or something. It's like All right, super okay. ancient okay. history, you know. Sure. Um, and this one, I, I wish I should have saved. I should have saved this like <laughs> a screenshot. A screenshot or something. But yeah, it true. took it literally took me like a year or something before I could even like find the humor in it. Like it was like it was just that comment Come was someone living in my mind. He said something like, "I just I can't stand listening to like Anders like squeals anymore. Every time you know he gets excited, it sounds like a fat pig having an orgasm." <laughs> and I just remember thinking like. Bro, like Horrible, that's but funny at the what same a, time. What an, it, it, it actually, in terms of like creative writing, it's oh, yeah. it's fire, it's, yeah, it's dead on. Fire, like, oh, yeah. what a what a wild, it's a great like, roast. It's, it, yeah. it's a great image. Like that's, I think it's why it, it was like, okay. oh, it's like, damn, like that's so. It, it also, because obviously in my own mind, I'm like, but I'm so, I am excited about it. Like, yeah. I'm, I really love this. Like, and then you just get like completely smacked. So like, yeah, that comment for, for me was like, 
wow, okay. That like to me, what I took, I mean, obviously this cousin could have just been having a, you know, uh, it could have been someone just having a really fun time. Yeah, yeah. But in my brain, what I read is just like this person really hates me, like legitimately hates me. I've like never met this person. I'm trying to do yeah. a good job, whatever. Like you know that that like, the conflict between those two things was like that. That was pretty brutal, you know, like just having that feeling of like, ooh, damn, okay. Yes. Um. So yeah, I mean, like that that happens sometimes, and like, that's part of the job, I guess. By the way, that even on. makes me think I'll relate it again to a phenomenon. I'm sure people will have experienced. I also feel like what Anders is saying there, even though you can rationalize it, you can sort of play armchair a psychologist and go, look, obviously this sure. person's having something else in their life that's bothering yeah. them, isn't it? Like, you know, maybe it's work, maybe it's family things, maybe it's even something dark, like a really bad illness is weighing over them, and then they've come sure. online, like I want to at least enjoy a game of CS or watch a match, and then they one thing triggers them, and they're like, they, they, you know, it's the straw that broke the camel's back, they go crazy. But so in that scenario, they could even even be something as simple. By the way, I think I get this all the time because I project this like, I think I project like. Uh, totally delusional, like witty, you know, sort of like raconteur who can play with things a little bit, you know, and occasionally sure, I can be a little yeah. bit spicy, but you know, I keep it reasonable. Obviously to other people, I'm just that like eighties rich kid bully in the yeah. fucking sports movie that everyone hates and is waiting to get crane kicked in the face at the end of the movie. And that's the worst thing. They're like archetypally taking me and they've never met me. I'll talk, but they think they know me and I'll give you the analogy tech girl. It's a bit like when, I notice women do this with names for some reason. If you say something to someone like, oh, yeah, like, oh, I've always loved the name Stacy. They'll be like, Stacy? That just sounds like some fucking red-haired bitch that steal your fucking boyfriend in high school. You go, whoa, whoa is it some sort of baggage? Going on? Why, why are you having this response to that name? It's a, but it just conjures up, like, again, like a connection that doesn't have anything to do maybe with who you're talking about. But you can see how that... Well, the point I'm actually making, as mad as it sounds, is actually that was like therapy talk too. Is it a <laughs> fucked up way their feelings might actually be valid? The point is, it's only valid to them, though. Sure, you have yeah. nothing to do with it. I can't just have nothing to do with it. As a result, <laughs> he can't change this or assuage their feelings. He can just sort of take the brunt of it. And hopefully, this is the hardest part. Recontextualize it and go, that isn't really about me, though, is it? Even though in the, at the time, by the way, that's also why I think I have the greatest retort ever to Richard. If you don't know, Richard Lewis wasn't called Richard Lewis originally. He used to be called Dr. Gonzo. That was his alias. True. But then he dropped it really early because he had a bunch of weird things he did as a journalist. Like one thing he famously said was, like, no one should do this job over the age of 30. And so, without, again, I'm not going to drop too many dimes, but basically, he'll admit this. He did start just changing his age on websites when he got to 30 because he was like, I don't want to be seen to be 31 when I said that thing ages ago. <laughs> But also, another thing he Obviously, did was yeah. he dropped the alias and just made it Richard Lewis. At a time when no one used their name, by the way, we all used Thorin or Carmack or, well, I guess Anders is Anders anyway. But you know what I mean? Well, I mean, he actually did have an alias back in the day. People don't know. But that's deep law. You've got to know that. Yeah. And basically, when he dropped it, he used to say, well, it's a bit childish, isn't it? You know, I think if you're going to be a serious journalist, you should move beyond that and have your name. Be. But I used to say to him, yeah, but Richard, the thing is, when someone says Duncan Shields is a piece of shit, like, I'm immediately going to think of me. That's I'm, me. I'm yeah. to, but if they go Thorin, I go, that's just a silly name I picked on the internet. So <laughs> shielding me in a way, isn't it? So there is a part True. where you have to kind of like distance a little bit. You might agree. It's incredibly hard at the moment. It, it is. It just is. <laughs> yeah. No, it's definitely not easy. Um, oh, what? I was going to say something else. Um, yeah, but I mean, I think I think ultimately, um, th I think that there are, there's no one strategy that I think is going to last like throughout like, you know, more than like a year or something. It's not going to happen. Um, and I mean, in a perfect world, people would, would be, could like see it coming, but I don't think it's possible. I think when you, when you're in the best days, then you're just enjoying your life Course. and you, you, you yes. don't realize that like, Course. oh, this is going to, I remember this with E-League. Like I remember when we were working E-League, I thought I exactly this mean, is yeah. the new normal. Like yep. this is just what esports is now. We're just like working in these really awesome places. Like we're getting, you know, flown people around. People don't know, by the way, there's even a side to that we've never told publicly because at the time we didn't want to burn them because they were so good to us and they spent so much money, which is, I'll just tell you straight up, they actually lied to us. Now, look, they might not have lied. It might have been just disingenuous and they didn't, as as things progressed, tell the truth. But basically when they came in, for example, Anders and Semler used to do ESL Pro League, which was the other big gig, right? Sure. At the time, if you did this E-League, you couldn't do ESL Pro League. So the premise went, they were like, well, obviously we're going to pick E-League. It's massive fucking American TV. Yeah. And they told us, don't worry. We're committed to this project. We're going to be here for five years. It's good. Remember, the first season, people forget, the first season was like bloody two months long. Second season instantly was like, you know, two thirds of that. Then the next year, it was becoming a week. And that's the problem. They made yeah. it sound like we'd all be there every year for two seasons. By the way, if just from that, you could have earned your yearly living. And that it'd go year on year on year. And so we all thought, like, <clears throat> we made it. We made the big time. Oh, I don't have to do anymore. And the problem is, they sort of like scaled back and didn't, they kind of left us hanging a bit on that, didn't they? Yeah, they, well, so this is actually interesting. Like, so I, 
when we first started talking to Elik, this is actually one of the things I brought up. I said, listen, you guys have to understand that if I go and I join this project, I am burning this other bridge with ESL that like I yes. specifically brought that up in the conversation. Yep. As a point to Which, say... Which, by the way, is how Henry and Sador yes. caught up as well. That was very key, That's, wasn't it? Yeah. It was massively yeah. key. Um, and I said, like, listen, so we need to know that it's it can't just be like a one, six month, one year kind of thing. And I remember being told, you know, we have the budgets, like, I think pre-approved to like 2021 or something. Like they said, like, we, we already have like all this stuff, like already ready yes. to go. Which, I mean, could have even been true. Like things can yeah, obviously change in that sense. Like they, they, they might not have been a lie at all, but... They did obviously change, and that I remember that feeling of of realizing, oh wow, we kind of, in a way, we kind of, like I, I not, I might have still done it just because it was an amazing experience, but um, in a way, it was like, oh, we absolutely opened the gate to a lot of competition, which turned yes. out to be amazing competition in, yes. in in Matt and and Henry, obviously, um, which, but this is something else actually I I thought about um, earlier. I had this thing really early on that I thought about. I have a, I have a very clear memory in my mind of. Oh, oh, this is going to sound like uh, some super narcissism shit as well, but... It's where you always pick it, like, <clears throat> what's the disclaimer yeah. first, I know, because he's like, yeah. just, remember though, yeah. folks, I am just Anders, I'm, I'm a just cool not guy a that you love. So, okay, I'm just not, not a narcissist. Not, not me, but yeah, another not one. Yeah, not me, but um, I remember thinking, <laughs> I, I felt like there was such a quality difference when Semler and I were casting an event as to, and to anybody else. Like, I think, I feel like the level was huge. And what and I felt like so if I'm not at the event and Summer and I are not at the event, then it's we're kind of misrepresenting Counter Strike and so like Counter Strike like the broadcasting it product right, isn't exactly. yeah, yeah. yeah isn't as good as as it could have been. Um, so I want to go to every single event. I remember thinking when when Matt and Henry started show, I remember thinking that's no longer the case. Like these guys can like these like Counter Strike is in good hands with these people in terms of like delivering a super solid entertainment product, and that's. Good, but it's also stressful because you realize, like, oh shit, we got competition. Like, we, like they, nobody has to hire us anymore. They can hire other people too, which is obviously a problem. But then I thought, on the other hand, if Counter Strike stays so small that I can be the king of all of it, then it's kind of a small thing, right? Like, it, it's sure. actually it kind of has to grow beyond like the control of of just like one or two people. Or alternatively, we have to try and control everybody else. As in, like, we have to become like the sort of king kingpins at the top who are like you savagely, you know, like the old you, boys clubs. Some might call it Anders. Yeah, um, <laughs> I think the model that we use. Not, to, I don't want to throw uh, <laughs> no, no, and Tosas under the bus that. necessarily, but like the model that we had in our brains yep. was like Tasters and Tosas. I think at that point had a bit of a reputation. I actually have no idea how much of it the tree probably know better than I do, Duncan. Yep. But but they had a bit of a reputation of being. Uh, like quite oppressive to new people trying to come up, especially in the Korean space and all the rest of it. And I just remember thinking, like, I kind of don't want that. Like, I kind of want to be like, I want people to look back and say, like, and as someone to try to help and try to like, you know, create openings and like try okay. to also be because in a way, the reason what I thought was, if I'm only here because I've managed to sabotage everyone else around me, then I'll actually never know if I'm even good or not. Like, I, 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 what, okay. I have no measurement for that because. All I've done is like wreck all the people who are trying to, you know, trying to get there before. Okay. And you can really do that. Like if yeah, you're in a position like if Some you're would the say many do in the industry at this, you know. It's it's like it's super doable, right? Like and I've sure. had it I actually have had it attempted at me at the beginning, like a couple of people sure, tried to yes. do this. Yes, and certainly yes, all people maybe. <laughs> it's, it's, there's a lot there's a lot of interesting history there. But um but but yeah, like you should you, you are like you, you get news from an event you weren't even at where someone's saying, like, wow, this guy is super unreasonable he's charging yes. an insane amount of money his ego is completely yes. run out of control and you realize wow like if this reputation takes hold like i i could be dead already like i might not even make another event yes. because like all the industry people think i'm you know a terrible person so i kind of i had a couple of thoughts like that at the beginning where i sure. thought it's not it's kind of not worth winning if all you're winning is this tiny little island like why not like you know and also you know you if you want to if you, you kind of make it on, on merit, then you kind of need competition. You need somebody to like. I just there. like the way that even though, because you're doing a good job talking, you're making it sound so reasonable. Mm. Sure. It does also yeah. sound yeah. like he's sort of going, and okay. how would I have even known if I was the best? But exactly. look, yes, I'm still here 10 years later. Where the fuck is Sadakist and Semper? Like, <laughs> that's what I mean. That was, and, yeah. and Loki did that. She sounded a bit yeah. like that. He sort of back. And I like the way he actually said for yeah, me exactly. like, that he lives his life, Sam, as though he's already picturing like the documentary that they make, like VH1 behind the news. <laughs> 20 years Anders behind the voice the inhuman yeah. casting voice where they're all going yeah and the thing about Anders was he could have crushed me early on but he actually raised me up and in many ways he was the wind beneath my wings you know like he's already envisioning like all the amazing oh, talking head angles where they're all you know like fucking Sponge has one tear coming down like, and then he, he told me even though I was a shit 
Australian CS player, I could be a good cast, and I am one Come now. On this side. Yeah, exactly. No, like I mean, I, I to some extent, like you know, <laughs> maybe with a little bit less, again, a little bit less dramatic. But I, but to some extent, I think I, I kind of, I do kind of want that. Like I, I want people to be able to look back and say, like okay. there was there like. Anders tried to do like something. Sometimes it's just super small things. Like sometimes it could just be me picking up the phone and saying, "Hey, company X, you should talk to this person because oh, sure. like it might take me literally five minutes, right? But it, but you know, like it's better than calling them and saying never talk to this. They're yes. they're super unreasonable, right? Um, so yeah, like sure, like I mean, um, I think I think I think that kind of thing is important. But I'll t- I'll tell you this: it's also it can also feel. It, like this is where like the inconsistency comes in, even okay. in my brain, because like I, yeah, as much as I want that, it you, I have like the same feeling of like annoyance at my past self in a way. When then the people you sort of you know try to help out, or like they're actually out competing you now, and you're like, it's like why did I do this to myself? Yeah, exactly. You know, like, I, I should have yeah. been, I should have really been the like yeah. the person who was like trying to write them. So like obviously I'm not super consistent on that. Like I still have the, still have those feelings sometimes where you're like. By the oh, way, man, like, I'll just trigger a core memory, Anders, because we won't say who it is, right? But actually, sure. what's hilarious is one of the ways when Anders first came in the scene. Here's another thing he probably had to learn. He came in just being someone from the Couch Strike scene, right? By the way, the Danish Couch Strike scene, people don't know, it's dark as fuck. Like spoiler, she yeah. knows this now because she's worked with Cadian. He's amazing on camera, <laughs> putting on a good face. But I'll tell you behind the scenes, he's fucking. Like he would get cancelled. If you think I'm bad, if they would t- if they were secretly filming the Grim, he'd be cancelled instantly. Man. He'd, be done, he'd be gone. Ev- never took me on any spots again. Sure, they, like that's just the level they're at, right? So Anders actually was always the reasonable one. So he came in the casting like this, going like, "So no, we can all share. It'll be, it'll be good." And then yeah. what he didn't know is like, yeah, but other people don't think that way. Anders, you can't model everyone nope. after yourself. So what people instantly did was they just perceived that as weakness, and they were like, "Right, I'm just going to instantly play a little finger from Game of Thrones and fuck this guy completely." And so as he's saying <laughs> in the early days when he's just trying to be really nice and work events there was actually a mad rumor which already had a grain of truth but it got blown out which was like essentially it was the mean girls version of in school where it's the nice girl moves there and you're jealous of them and you fucking feel threatened so you don't just say i don't like him you just go oh i've heard she fucked the whole football team or some some crazy lie like that yeah. right so what they said about anders that that still years later lived in his head was they just made some outrageous lie like he asked for like four thousand euros a day or yep, something, something like that. Back, by the way back when he got like one thousand for being the best person you know some like insane comment like that and that was actually it, and here's the thing it wasn't just coming from one person that was like the thing in the industry that was like the yeah. background chatter and yeah. obviously eventually it was getting back to you right Anders, and you were thinking like, what's this? what's going on like but i've never said that and so it, was, it, it felt like it's getting out of control right it does because and because the, the thing that comes with this is this idea that like the 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 ego thing has got to him right like he's yes. he's, he's one of those cases of the, the kind of person who just who can't basically handle it, and it's just like it's going to be an insa- like a, a super dreadful person to work with. It's not going to be worth it. Like it, he's, it's already happened to Anders. So you know, like that. That I, I heard it from like five different people at that event who came back to me and said, "Wow, like I never really got this vibe, but I like I heard that this is why you you're not the event." He is esports or something. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, yeah, but it was that. That was um, I don't know, like that. Yeah, that was that was super. Uh, that was one of those panic moments early yes. on where I was thinking, like, man, this is this is really gonna this is gonna hurt a lot. Yes. Um, do you want yeah. a good punchline? There's a happy end. Here's what's funny, Sam. There's okay. a happy ending to that story. Because one of the events where that rumor got around and it denied Anders some work was one where he didn't get hired for this event. So luckily they brought me in and it was an event called EMS One Catavita in March of 2014. Famously. So there was a happy ending for everyone. It ended up brilliant for all yeah. of us. It was good. <laughs> Google that one, maybe. If you want to know the, you want to know the law on that one, people. Okay, so it's basically, wild. I wish Anders had probably taken the gig. But no, <laughs> yeah. Actually, I always say, actually, Anders, to be fair, this is where you've got to reinterpret negatives as, as blessings and be grateful for the chance to learn and grow i always say i'm actually really happy i got banged out so many times early on because i actually did it before there was a real cancellation culture you know like True, i just yeah. did it where people got mad at you on the internet for two days so i got all that out the way really early on whereas if i had like not done that then i'd have had some comment like in 2018 that's where you'd just be dead completely you'd never, you'd never come back at that point you know i'd and be writing twit longers you know in oh, fairness, God. you got baited by Chan Man as well. Like he's he skated by, but yeah, obviously true. he he opened He was the, the mastermind behind he it wasn't, all, wasn't he? Anyway. At all. He, just, he, <laughs> yeah. he saw I was getting too big for my bridges. I wouldn't yeah. be on his show anymore. So I'm going to keep him at this level. Um, I guess something else to, to just to maybe bring up is like a, a coping sort of strategy. Um, if, if that's like the, still the the overall headline here, I would say um, it is probably true for just for everybody in in life, really. But I think it's just important to have. Like there's something that I identified at one point, like several years ago, and I've not done like a great job, I would say, of of making this uh, better. But I realized at one point, like my the whole 
like vector for my life if my life is good or not it's just all about casting it's just all if i get hired for events i'm happy if i do good at the events i'm even happier um and if the if it's the reverse it, it's bad and that's it like there's nothing else that i'm doing that's kind of like changing that so i just realized at one point like i have to have some other thing that if this is bad then i can like put it away and i can go and do something else so and that's I can why say, you like, had kids that's so why, exactly, yes yeah <laughs> okay. you do you do you that go. and you've got so what he did is he wanted to avoid narcissism getting drawn so he just made little versions of himself versions of to himself. watch and then admire and to look control and command yeah, yes. no, exactly they have to do what i say like they don't even know it but exactly. yeah. it's like control group in starcraft yep. that's exactly right um, so he has yep. like, he has like a random question because we've spoken a lot about the fans and like the job and stuff but this is something so obviously i watched a lot of cs i was a fan i was in south africa this wasn't really a job and i feel like over time and i'm curious about where you two sit on this is like i kind of feel like we've i don't know if it's because esports and counter-strike has a lot more sort of like business people involved and it's a lot more like set up smarter i don't know if it's smarter or like just more formulas but it feels like cs broadcasts have become safe like people are scared yep. to so like for me the reason i used to love watching it is because everyone and i think i've said this before on, a, on another episode of the show where like it needs to feel for me like a desk needs to feel like you're all in team speak just talking shit. like that was kind of what i feel a desk should be but i grew up watching Richard Lewis and then Machine host their desks. And that's what their desks were. It felt like just a bunch of mates sitting talking as if we were in TeamSpeak. But it feels like we've become really safe on broadcast now. We don't have those like, sure. I don't think, and I think like spicy is not the right word, but because they, they weren't necessarily like spicy. Sometimes the game was, it was, it was an average game, but they were, there was just a, the, from the commentators to the desk, there was this like, I don't know how to explain it. At like old events, we used to literally sometimes during the, this is, Anders used to love this. When we did the throw, we would try and roast them as much as possible during the throw. I remember Because then, yeah. then they have to try and respond, but then quickly go in the game. So they only have like a little window to do it in. But you try and get as many jabs in as you can at them. And then it's like, we would even do that as though it was like college humor. And like, as though we weren't even working some massive fucking event with all hundreds of thousands of people watching. It's true. That was a thing. If you want to know something, a little piece of trivia, by the way, exactly what you're describing is why I I created the show Hot Take Point Made because there's certain people out there that, again, in a green room would give you straight fire takes. That's like, that's sick. And then I would tell them, and listen, I'll just say it the way I would say it as a character, definitely not me. It's a one-man play, <laughs> Thorin, off, off, off Broadway. Right. I would go, listen, you fucking pussy, sit on the desk or shut the fuck <laughs> up. Right? And then they'd go on the desk and deliver the most mild version. Like, oh yeah, I think maybe Astralis, you know, shouldn't have picked that map and they didn't play well. And it's like in the green room, that person was like, Astralis is never going to win this event. Like Team Liquid all the way away. Yeah. So what I decided was, uh, I, there's a concept I can very briefly explain, which is in Korean Starcraft or League of Legends, we're obviously Koreans having this honor culture where by default, you have to be super respectful, even to your opponents, right? So what they did is they created a concept where before big finals, as a hype concept, they would have interviews. But that you could tell if you just watched the way the interview goes. That off camera, a producer that gets cut out tells the player, this is a trash talk segment. It's a designated trash talk segment. Yeah, yeah. So it's actually your job and responsibility to come up with something funny for fans to get engaged with. So for example, and I'm pretty sure they even like suggest the things to them, you know, like you used to play with this guy. Like maybe you could say something about like when you were, I'll beat you and I'll be the first to win the championship. And it allowed Koreans who normally are super demure and polite to be actually sort of a bit wild yeah. and sort of be like, hey, I will just, you know, we used to be teammates, but at the end of this, all we'll share is our memories because I'll have the trophy. And you'd be like, holy shit, yeah. oh, you spin now. Yeah. And basically, I wanted that show to be like that. I was like, right, if everyone's going to be too scared on the desk to see it, because they all know, like the infamous pimp one, where he did go, I'll always talk to him. This is the greatest hot take ever, but also the shittest take simultaneously. It's when there was an event when Na'Vi had reached their peak when Simple was 1v9 in every game. And at that point, they still used to sometimes lose to like Vitality or Astralis, right? Even if Simple dropped like a 45 bomb and went every match. And so Pimp goes on the desk and crafted the craziest hot take. He just goes. I think it's, it's about time we have to start asking the question, is it Simple to blame? And it was just like, <laughs> and obviously you can imagine every person in the world opened Twitter and Based. began typing to him like, why? And then another letter. <laughs> yeah. And like yeah, everyone. And so unfortunately, I think that scared him away. And after that, I noticed he, he peeled it way back and he got a lot more reasonable and he got a lot more perfect. And so I wanted there to be a show because I agree with you. I love that spirit. I love the idea of people throw a crazy hot take out there and that you're allowed to do that. And you're allowed, because that is again, like you're saying, that is what you would do either 
if you were in a pub watching the game with someone, you'd have some ridiculous take because you've had two drinks too many or whatever, you know, or you just hate that player. Like, in a way, that is also, what you're sort of getting at is that's what we can do that they can't do, actually, on, like, proper sports because proper sports yeah. have too many millions of dollars and eyeballs and they know there's, like, three people can do that job. And it's great. So people feel in that space that you can't be authentic. You actually, in fact, to be authentic would actually probably be decried. This, you're supposed to maintain a, a professional sort of uh, artifice, aren't you? You're supposed to almost have, like, a, I, in fact, some of them are even to believe they shouldn't have an opinion. They should just be neutral, whatever the fuck that means. Whereas <laughs> I've always said, I think the thing in esports is, what's brilliant is we can not only be authentic, we can actually be biased. Like, I actually think, for real, yeah, of course. people don't get this still. It is a feature, not a bug, when I do a desk that, obviously, if, like, it's Carrigan and he's playing, I'm going to hype the fuck out of him as the greatest ever. Meanwhile, yeah. if it's, like, in this analogy, currently, like, snacks, everyone's going to be like, you have to give us respect now, Thor. It's like, watch this. And then I'll just double down and be like, he's fucking trash. Yeah. It's not 2017 anymore, and you're not eating apples anymore, if you ever indeed ate apples, figuratively. So I... I think that's actually a feature. That's one of the things I agree with. That. That's something I vibe with in esports. I love, that's why, obviously, the person I've done the most work with recently is Maui Snake, and he's obviously coming from my lineage. Yeah. We, we, we are the Sith of Analysis Desks. I was going to bring Maui up. It's like a, I did, for me, it's, it's He's super, my Darth Maul. Exactly. <laughs> it's super complexing to me how, like, how uh, perplexing how he ended up like getting hired less and less. Oh, I, yeah. I, ho I hope that changes because... It, doesn't it feel like this is part of the reason why, Anders? That's I, sort of inferred, right? Yeah, 100%. I even started asking around inside of the industry. It's like, does anyone even know? Like, why is he not getting hired? Right. I genuinely don't understand because he... Like he'll, it's not even that his takes are super offensive, but it, but oh, they no. are they are just funny enough that I, you I care about something that I maybe wouldn't have cared about otherwise. Yes, like Big has made another roster change. Do I actually care about this no. even a little bit? Probably really not. But the most genius one Anders was that one that stupid cultural impact thing where his yes. only angle you could find on to exactly. hit Zemu, who's fucking sick at the game was yeah, but he's never done anything famous and he's not any quotes yeah. anything. And like that actually became a thing. That and the fucking air quality in Canada. The air quality no, yeah. that was the best. But, and remember. I even told Maui this year, I actually DM'd him, bro, you've literally, you became a made man today. <laughs> when Zewoo's own Twitter account tweeted before, like, the match in Kanavitsu or Cologne or whatever, like, an actual fucking picture of the air quality, yeah, and it said air quality, done. okay. And it's like, bro, you've, you've made it now. Yeah, when yeah, he himself, I mean, look, spoiler, that's not really Zewoo, that's his, like, fucking manager or a PR agent. But when the, when the, it's, it's like that thing back in the day, you know the story, Anders, where NIP, when I used to say, it's just the magic when they were doing the event where I didn't predict them to win. Right, so I was sort of saying, look, I mean, I obviously know what I was doing. I'm going, it's magical what they're doing. It's amazing. So, what I'm doing is, it, there's no actual scientific reason they should be allowed to win. It's just God intervening. They used to get really salty when I did that. And then I, I always tell this story. Two years later, they were at like an IEM Auckland or something. And I just saw like actually like Forrest or something wearing a shirt that was like nip magic. And I was like, yeah. the fuck? But that's <laughs> where eventually it become like that. What we're talking about here is you actually yeah. are sort of like taste making. You're setting like cultural standards for real. It's cool. Yeah. So I think, so I, there was a moment in time where people, I can't remember the exact year, but at, some, at one point it became real important to everybody that people wear suits and ties and all the rest of it. Yes. And I think that was like the, that was like the heralding of, the, of the moment where people said, we need esports to be more professional, whatever yes. that means. And, and I think it's like a if if we build it, they will come kind of moment. As in, people like, probably thought we were going to be on TV. Well, I think I, them, I think what's worse is I think what people did is they said if we become you know professional like sports, then we will have the like the sports audience will come. Like there will be like oh a, right, it's like the cargo cult thinking, right? I think so. Yes, yeah, exactly like that. And I so I think that that's like that's what people thought is is we can get like all of these sports benefits and like there's some magical audience out there in the future yes. that's going to show up and they will spend money like the sports audience does they will do like all the same things will be and that i just think has been completely debunked like by reality like like we just know that's not the case anymore i don't think most esports people really care that much about like what kind of suit somebody's wearing. If, i think if you want to wear it it's great like no problems at all and maybe in some roles uh it's it might even look better uh, you know in certain circumstances but I just don't think it's like it's not what makes or breaks the broadcast on on really any level. And I think on the other hand, like the like the stepping away from from the core vibe of it, I think is is a giant mistake, basically. And I, I've I've been banging this drum for a while. Like to some extent, I think just if you keep it a Counter Strike, because I don't really know what, how the other games are like. But in Counter Strike, where where is the community? Like it is on HLTV, it's on Reddit, and it's in Twitch chat. And those are like, the, is anyone ever interacting with those spaces? Like we're pretending like no. they're you know, like just lepers that we just have to like stay away yep. from them. Like, you know, we're all going to get the seized and like, yeah, sure. Like 
Twitch chat is mental, but like they they're your best customers, right? Like they're they're all the time typing and watching and doing all this shit, and we're just all pretending like they don't exist and and that they are like beneath us because the real professional audience is you know that they're the ones we're coming for, right? Like they're around the corner, like we you know we're catering to them. They're not watching now, but you know they'll real soon they're they're gonna show up. I just think it's so that's so, that's so ridiculous, and it's like I just think we have to in a way. I'm I feel strongly that in many cases a product like now we're in the world of co-streaming right like if somebody set up the right co-streaming couch like you said somebody's had a few drinks and it's all like good like i think there's a good chance that product could beat like the main product in, in a couple yeah, of different of ways yeah 100%. Um, yeah so that that's worth thinking about right like by the way the that's even the thing at the end that i think is so brutal about the fact that I, i'll be honest that's one of the reasons i want to do events again i do think it's gotten too still and i actually think it wouldn't just be me doing that i think i could like prod other people and get more out of them etc yeah sure. i know you tried to do it but they don't always pick up the throat etc and sometimes they just let it go all they just like no i'll, I'll leave that hot potato over there and they just do a, a mild take but one of the reasons why is i know you said Cassad recommended this to you but i actually think the biggest revelation that that we always had it cracked in esports, what the future of doing streams, like I'm just saying, in the modern day, by the way, think of how Valorant works. The joke in Valorant is there's been times when the core streamer, like Tarek, fucking yeah. pea brain Tarek, like, just... <laughs> Oh, clears the bong like oh, guys you see what the hell was that like he's not even casting like he's just bloody watching the game like actually like you just yeah. your fucking roommate yeah. in college or something and that's like, getting more views than like pansy and whoever the fuck on the actual broadcast trying to yeah. real commentary well if you know it's uh, it's that cbs call that's your show which is the football show they do for the american audience on cbs where they have like thierry Henry, jamie carragher and micah richards and kate abdo aka kate scott now because you got married just keep an update on the law there. And nice. basically, if, you do, if you've never watched it before, it's just a bloody desk of like me, Richard Lewis, and someone from 2015. Like, it's just bantering yep. and punditry. And essentially, like, we didn't invent it. It's just Top Gear. You don't yeah. really watch Top Gear for the actual technical details. Yeah, you watch yeah. it for them roasting and doing a silly challenge and referencing some shit from before. That's it. Because essentially, to bring it all back, the real well, epiphany you have is it's about entertaining. It's not really actually about <laughs> the sickest weatherman segment ever with smokes and defans. No. It's about like, do they, are, they, is, are they engaged? Is it entertaining? Is it giving them a thrill? Is it inciting something? By the way, even if it's them to hate you, even if it's me saying some shit about Brazilians yes. and then they're all like, oh, like okay, that's actually so essential. On, so on that, on the hating front, here's another problem, which is that the the problem is the tournament organizers to a large extent i would say don't understand that if the community hate let's say you or maui or something, that's a that's a bonus to them it's like, a feature not a bug yeah. yes they don't like it, you, you want know. that thread you really want that yeah. thread to be number one exactly and yes. so I, I i remember so i had this conversation once i might not have even ever told you about this because it's kind of irrelevant at the end of the day but um and i think i can say this now because i think all those people are no longer actually working with blast anymore like they like they've all like Here you know kind of all, all left and, and can't gone, imagine why blast would like and okay, gone go like other ways. but really early on this was a conversation because i was doing a lot of um like sort of consulting work for blast at the beginning like you sure. know trying to help out on the broadcast had all these things um right when they were getting started and this was a topic that was brought up it's like should we hire duncan for the desk and i say i think you should but you should only really do it if you are kind of willing to stand but by him like you like you shouldn't do it with the with the sort of feeling that we'll cut the parachute court you know the second he says something that we're yes. not interested like that's dishonest in like you so yes. just you know you should do it and you should be aware that he's probably going to say something that yeah like so probably some player or team will call you up and say definitely Here's what, and obviously yeah. there is some line that he could cross where obviously you'd have to say okay well now we have to fire you because you just said something that's Listen, i am much like rick james and that's getting a habitual line step around this that's who <laughs> exactly. I am, okay yeah sure but i i mean obviously knowing you like I, I i feel like let's say you cross that line so much you'd probably even just nod and say yeah i get it like obviously yeah, of course. Or, you know I, you yeah know, you can you can I, read it back in yeah of course yeah but so but the idea that a team can sort of call a tournament organizer and say we are unhappy with you know like yep. this personal broadcast like on some level they should hang up the phone and just say <laughs> Okay, like yeah, this, this is our side of the table. Yep, like you guys exactly. play the game and do these yep. things. Like just don't worry about exactly. what we're doing because we're trying to create entertainment. You guys really don't know anything about that. Like this is, you know, the fact that there is a front of a front page Reddit thread where yes. people are saying Maui Snake said something disrespectful about this team. This is it even acceptable? Blah, blah, blah. Like that's all great. Like it's just <laughs> all fine. Like we we sure. need that because the alternative is that it, nobody cares, right? It's yeah, not, like, exactly, not, exactly. Like that's not great. Yeah. Like. Um, so I, by the yeah, way, I this, by the way, I can even tell you, not even just behind the scenes, this even has happened. Like there was a famous incident. I can see it now because we're all mates, wink, wink, nudge, nudge. And again, it's like 
10 years later or whatever, which is one time on a broadcast, I, as I'm, you know, throwing out all the stream of consciousness comments, I did say something mad, like when the, like my best work, if no one remembers, you don't even do this nowadays for desks, I notice, is when you would talk on the desk and so it wasn't just three people on a static shot. They would do that shot where they're going down the line of the players, showing you who they are, f- putting up some shitty graphics card, but you know, this JW was an all push since 2013. <laughs> was like that thing there. And as they go down, you know, we're talking and obviously they encourage you like the horse, like talk about the player on the screen so famously i used to, especially back in like 2015 when there wasn't like we hadn't got walk culture yet so i used to just literally do stuff like say what you say so i'll just be roasting people's looks and everything so i think one <laughs> yeah. time i said something like that i essentially compared flusher to Gollum and being like oh, a wretched creature going after the ring or something you know maybe even said he cheated you know like some bad like you know some harmless bad like that and basically but it wasn't even flusher that got mad it was actually like fucking I'm just going to say it. it was actually Taz and Fallen just straight up went to like DreamHack and were just like, how can he, why is he allowed to like make fun of players? Like this is really unprofessional. Yeah. And essentially, like actually, I will say it wasn't necessarily that DreamHack stood by me because they are Swedish for fuck's sake. They were just like, oh, oh no, we'll have to like have a, an inquiry will be launched into like some shit like that, right? But sure. here's what's cool. I'll actually give props now. It was actually the other players that dealt with that. That's how sick it was back in the day with the vibe. Because if you don't know, by the way, no matter what they say now, now we've got to the point where everyone's so famous. Players have to almost pretend like they don't know that there's analysts going on or commentary or they're above yeah, it all. Yeah. And also they'll never acknowledge it, right? Except every now and then I do bait some of them. They have to reply to me on Twitter. But back then, some of them would even acknowledge that when they were waiting in the arena and they, they we didn't have all the hotels and shuttles back then, they'd be waiting to play their game. They would watch and they'd want it to be cool and they'd want it to be funny and entertaining and they understand sometimes the match is crap and so actually it was players by the way within their group before it was an official player union people who were like the leaders of the players were people like JW, Flush's teammate, by the way, NBK, these guys who sort of got it and were mates of mine, basically just told people like Taz, like, shut up, you idiot. Like, you understand, like, in the same way as we have to entertain in the game, that's what they're doing on the broadcast. They're yeah. actually making, like, something of nothing. So, like, maybe in that moment, there was nothing to say. Maybe, maybe Fnatic won every last 10 match and it's the same thing every time. So, actually, th- there have been some real moments that were like that. There was, there was that tension between when, what is what is entertaining but what is allowed. And I think, I mean, like uh, this from like a casting point of view, right? Like sometimes if if, if a caster says um, they like this is a one versus four, they can never win this round. Like you're, they're never winning. It's, Henry G's classic thing, which they all yeah. get mad at, even though, by the way, I love it. Because then if they win it, fucking it's, sickest round ever in it. Yeah, that's the only, like how else if, if, if every yes. single one versus four, you say there's always a chance. Well, yep. then how exciting is it? Like, yeah, exactly. we are, okay, well, yeah, there's always yes. a chance. Like, oh, yeah, this is one of those times where, yep. the, okay, cool. Uh, like the idea that it is essentially functionally impossible is like, yes. that's what you're overcoming to. Like you have to you have to draw that out in a way. And I think similarly, like if I, if, you know, if, if if EG field another terrible team and everyone is uh, is, is wrecking them and saying then they're, they're never even like they're, they're going to yep. finish dead last. Right. Well, now if they make like the top four, like they also earn the oh, right sure. to like wreck anyone that yes. says that they can make all the fun they want. Yep. Like and, and that's and, and people tune in for that, too. Like people would yes. say, I, I want to watch, you know, Duncan or, or somebody on the desk. You know, just red faced, unhappy that you know that like yep. the, their prediction. Oh man, I've had to eat some mad humble pie on finals. Yeah. When someone just fucking won it, and I've said they definitely you know, get two zero. And they have to come back to me, and I have to go like, "Yes, Richard, they were they were a lot better than we thought they would be, and they won a great <laughs> yeah. champion." And, oh, yeah, you have to eat the humble pie. You, you, they get their own back on you in a way. Yeah, it's that's like a super. And similarly for players, because I've noticed players have stopped doing this too, right? But if somebody comes out and says. You know, like is a post like a pregame interview or someone's like, "Oh, what's the game going to be like?" If somebody drops a line and they say like, "It's not even going to be a game," like we've already won, they just haven't yes. figured it out yet. Like if somebody says something like, you know, some really insane shit like that, like the most boring game in the world could now become like really. Yes. Like, I'm, I'm in this. Yeah, like yeah. I want to see. Like either they are right or they're going to be humbled, and I'm I want to watch that too because that's super entertaining. Like either way. By the way. I actually also, there's another thing, if they're watching, I want players to do this too. Because I always said, I even said it on yeah. PGL Stockholm, I always said the biggest bomber ever was we had the dream box office movie central casting final. Remember, the final was the unbeatable Na'Vi, who hadn't lost a map, with Simple, who's the GOAT, but he's never won the major. And then he was playing Nico in G2, like oh, yeah. the best rifler, who's never won a major. One of them is guaranteed to win yeah. a major right now, right after we've just had all that COVID bullshit period 
in the Dome Ages, right? That should be the, that should be like Manny Pacquiao versus Floyd Mayweather, where you've all been waiting with bated breath all this time to watch it. And then when they came out on stage and Banks had Simple and Nico, he's even got the right players for, he didn't even do the mistake they normally do of getting the bloody coach of the IGL who's going to say some fucking political answer. He got the star players and then he goes, and what do you want to say to him? And this is so whack because in the moment they were probably thinking things like, well, I've been here before and I lost, you know, and plus yeah, like, yeah. I don't want to look stupid like that. They actually just both complimented each other. And they were just sort of like, I just hope it's a yeah. good game for both teams. He's like, good luck, <laughs> Sasha. And I was like, what? Boo! Yeah. Boo! You're supposed to say, like I said earlier, like, well, simple, you know what? I always wanted you to win a major, so I hope you get the next one. You know, you're supposed yeah, to do yeah. some straight fire like that, aren't you? Like, that's what you say, Absolutely. isn't it? Like, that's what you're supposed to drop. Because then as he says, there's no outcome that ruins that narrative that actually is straight fire, isn't it? Yeah, but I think I think one of the things that unfortunately it kind of ruins it a little bit and it's like a community cultural thing but like the problem is the community also has to be cool in a way like the community yes. as a whole has to be except because let's say nico dropped that line and then obviously you know like he like screws it up he misses the deagle on nuke or whatever it is and yep. like it, it like that line will be fused in with that clip and people are going to be like you said saying what like in a way that's fine it's okay but at some point also the community also has to kind of let up and say, but yes. he's still like obviously an amazing player. And yes. like, like it has to be some kind of because otherwise, what happens is sure. people just stop doing it because the pain of yeah, doing the cost it is, becomes yeah, too much. It's it? not yeah. worth it. Um, it sucks because like it does. It makes everything more fun. But I think this is this is one of those things where it's worth realizing. I think that even the community sometimes don't really know what they want because if you ask yes. people, they do. Yes. They still will say we want professional broadcast like sports with people in suits yeah. and all the rest of it, but nobody's watching it. So then they don't want that. They actually want something else. They or they just say, can't... you know, we want like deep tactical insight and with them. And yeah. then the whole thing is the thread is never like, look at this amazing insight that Yanko said about the smoke. It's always just like, Maui's buddy's yes. opinion kill yeah. Maui, you yeah, lynch exactly, him. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like no, that's, that, yeah. that, it's why you know their actual actions reveal their like secret preferences, doesn't it? Course. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So kind of worth, uh, yeah, worth thinking about on the, in that level. Um, oh, shit. I was trying to think. Yeah, come on, an... jump, <laughs> say, come jump in, Sam. You can't just let Anders talk the whole time just because it's fucking. Yeah. Just because he's sat at the feet of the master and he's fucking <laughs> waxing was... the little. Come on, we've gone over time, but I yeah. was actually I was going to say it was funny. Anders was talking. I remembered something my mom told me last year, which I okay. Could, well, just before the major, because I was I was getting a lot of mean threats. Not and about I was feeling... me at home. No, it wasn't about you, Anders. I'm sorry. I don't actually think my my mom still thinks that like I talk over like tea like kids cartoons oh, sometimes. Hell. <laughs> By the way, as a quick aside, I will tell you a, straight, a little detail because he's not here anymore. R.I.P. Love you, Santa Kiss. You were the goat. Pretty cool. Even though you did only do it at 50%, that wasn't just a meme. That was also bizarrely <laughs> actually sort of true if you know that. By the way, it's not even false. He was literally watching racing while doing the best casts ever, which yeah. I've got to say, God bless you. That's insane multitasking, but it's also mental. You should have just fucking watched the game. But anyway, he used to actually, I'm not trolling, and he wasn't joking, by the way. He would just sometimes come into the event room and go, uh, Duncan, uh, mom says, like, uh, why don't you wear that blazer you wore on the first day? I'm like, what? What the fuck are you talking about? And his mom was watching and like giving him notes to like tell me I'm like, we're like, oh, that suit works with your eyes. Like, that's amazing. That's mom, weirder than everything. Yeah, she doesn't watch the broadcast, but I was, I was feeling a little bit like. I like the way your mom thinks you work on like Blue Peter on the BBC. Yeah, she has no clue what it is. I love it. But I said so. I I, I'll never forget she because I said so. I was getting all these like these threads on on HLTV, and it was ups it wasn't upsetting me, but it was like I was like all these people are really mean, and she said, you know what, you should worry when no one's talking about you, and I still remember saying, so what do you mean? And she goes, yes. if they're talking about you. They're remembering what you said and you're making an yeah. impact. She was like, yeah. be worried when no one talks about That's you right, at all. Yeah. And that kind of stuck with me for a long time because I was yes. like, that actually makes a lot of sense. Like at least you're if you're making someone feel something, you're in they're investing in it. Whether it's it's yeah, hate yeah. for Maui and, and the need for him to shut up, yes. they're still invested in watching. I'm just imagining the one time your mom goes, you know, I should probably, I should, I, I can't do the accent. Like, I probably should tune in and see what, 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 what hey, Blue, what are you fucking doing? The, I can't do the accent. I can't do it. Sorry. I wish I could. It'd be funnier. But anyway, I imagine her tuning in the one time ever. And it's that last segment. And Katie's just like, want to measure the size of my balls? Oh, She's like, oh, that's my daughter out there. Just working with the given family name on the bottom. <laughs> and on that note, oh. we'll end it. I'm actually going to show my mom this, and I'll show her the Cadian clip as okay. well at some point. Beautiful. Thank you so much for for joining us, Anderson. Thank you so Cheers, much guys. for watching. Uh, you'll we'll be back for another episode soon.